What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to any Rise of Kingdoms video. Today I'm making my last video about Sargon. I've already made a video talking about his change on his debuff. He made a live stream and in that live stream we had Psych out 12 inch PvP ness, Shappy Gaming, Duke and Rexy from Infantry's Fortress Discord. So that live stream was fire and we only talked about Sargon. I will have a link, I will have a card at the end screen for that live stream. So make sure to check it out if you still have questions about Sargon. But as you can see, today I made a flowchart specifically for Sargon to discuss or to answer who should invest on Sargon the Great. Without further ado, let's answer that question. Let's go. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> the first thing we do in Rise of Kingdoms when we are deciding to invest on a commander or not is dividing players by their spending level. As you can see, we have high spender, free play low spender and mid spender. Let's start and get rid of the high spender section, just max, lol. One of the main benefits of spending in Rise of Kingdoms is that you can afford to have very specific commanders for very specific reasons. For example, I know it's not related, but I think you will get the point. You can invest, if you're a high spender, Veil, vale, Kraken, whatever you want to call it, you can have a max Constantine just for Canyon. And that's it. You will only use him in Canyon and you are spending 690 sculptures on a Constantine. But you can afford it. We, the best we can do is a 5511 Constantine. And I don't even recommend it if you're a pure free to play, if you're a low spender like me, and if you kind of care about Canyon, yeah, go ahead and get a 5511 Constantine. But if not, don't touch it if you're a full free to play. But high spenders, you have the privilege to have the best commander for pretty much every single scenario in Rise of Kingdom. So, yeah, go ahead and max him because. He is good at a few things, and we will discuss it right now in the mid spender section. The question you should be asking to yourself are you a rally leader, structure swarmer, or your alliance is Osiris League focused? Because, as I said on my first Sargon video, and as we discussed on our live stream two days ago, Sargon is going to be a great rally leader. He's going to be really good when it comes to swarming structures, and on top of that, he will be one of the best commanders when it comes to middle fights in Osiris League because people are still using Ethelflaed in Osiris League middle fights so yeah sargon is obviously great for that and if the answer of this question is yes then you can invest but if the answer is no the question you should ask do you use plus two infantry marches if the answer is yes okay go ahead and invest on sargon if the answer is no again even if you're a mid spender in my opinion you shouldn't invest on sargon now everything will be more clear when we finish discussing free to play and low spender section the first question you should be asking yourself is do you already have top three marches max and these marches are guan yu cpo nevsky john budika artemisia or budika ysg depending on your investment preseason of conquest on ysg if both your ysg and artemisia is like zero 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 my advice is budika artemisia because i feel like budika artemisia performs a little bit better than budika ysg but if you already have a max YSG from preseason of conquest, like I do, then Burika YSG is also a great pair, one of the best archer marches, one of the best marches in Rise of Kingdoms at this moment. Now, if your answer is no to this question, if you don't have the Holy Trinity max, I call them Holy Trinity, no, you do not invest on Sargon. But if your answer is yes, the next question you should be asking yourself are you an infantry main? This may sound similar to the question in mid spender section, do you use plus two infantry marches? But this time what I'm asking is, since you are not a mid spender, do you have the equipment for your second, third infantry march? Do you have the proper city skin? Like, are you actually an infantry main? If the answer is no, do not invest because you are going to use only one infantry march and it's going to be Guan CPO. But if the answer is yes, the question is, do you have a third commander ready? If the answer is no, do not invest. If the answer is yes, but there is a little caveat, make sure to have A plus tier equipment. Caught up in the top, if you wonder what is that A plus tier equipment, and it's not just for infantry, I also talk about other troop types in that video. And if the answer is yes, if you have that A plus tier equipment, choose between Sargon and Herald. I will come back to this later. Let's just go left. Do you have the luxury to bench a max commander? The answer is no, do not invest. The answer is yes invest what i mean by that is for example for my account i'm an infantry main and i already have guan cpo and i already have herald alex max and i'm happy with my payers but let's say i didn't have herald maxed 
So I have uh, Alexander from Preseason of Conquest, and I have Guan CPO, the best infantry march, and I'm using my Alex with a scuffed march like, I don't know, Richard Alex still in Season of Conquest, Charles Alex, or even maybe Alex YSG. This means I'm looking for a fourth infantry commander to pair with my Alex. Then I can choose between Sargon and Herald. They both can be really good, but they have different purposes. With Herald, you will get targeted less, that's a fact, and you are going to deal a lot of raw skill damage. But with Sargon, you will be more beneficial to your team because you will be applying some skill damage taken debuff. So for my account, I am in here. Do you have the luxury to bench a max commander? No, I don't because I have my Nevsky max, but I'm still trying to get my Joan to a usable spot. I have a max YSG, but again, still I'm trying to max my Burika. She's at 5551. So no, at this moment, I don't have the luxury to bench a max commander. But once I get my Burika max, Joan, 5515 then i might consider investing on sargon but at this moment no this commander is not for me and trust me this commander is not for at least like 85 to 90 percent of you because the requirements for you to invest on this commander is quite a bit first you need to have guan cpo nevsky john budik artemis your budik avsg maxed then you gotta make sure that you are an infantry main and then you should either have the luxury of benching a max commander or you should have that third commander ready and you should be looking for a fourth commander to pair with your third commander. And if only you have at least that A plus tier equipment, then yeah, you can invest on Sargon or you can invest on Herald. Spartan from feature here. I realized after editing the video, we didn't talk about possible best pairings of Sargon. Sargon is a very universal commander. You can pretty much pair him with anyone, any infantry commander. But the thing is, there are upsides and downsides of pairing him with each infantry commander, you can certainly go for Guan Yu and Sargon, and the benefit of it is that you can apply AoE debuffs with Guan Yu's first skill, and on top of that, you are going to deal extra debuff with the additional damage of Guan Yu from his fourth skill. So this is a benefit of Guan Yu, but the thing is, if you pair your Sargon with Guan Yu, you are not pairing your CPO with Guan Yu, so there's a big downside. Same goes for CPO, if you go Sargon CPO, then you're not pairing your CPO with Guan Yu. The benefit is, again, you are able to apply that debuff with an AoE from CPO's first skill. But another downside is, you cannot apply extra debuffs from a fourth skill of CPO. You can do it with Guan Yu, as I said, but you cannot do it with CPO. Another option, obviously, Alexander the Great. You want Sargon primary, Alex secondary, because Alex has attack tree. But with Sargon, you want to cast your active skill before anyone else so that you can apply those debuffs. And... Other marches will use their active skills, so they're going to deal a lot more damage. So you want Sargon primary, Alexander secondary. The benefit is you have a lot of stats with Alexander, you have a lot of movement speed, and you can also apply debuff with the additional direct damage factor from Alexander's second skill. But the problem this time is that you don't have the AoE that you have with CPO, you have with Guan Yu. So that's the problem, but Sargon Alexander is definitely a march that you can use. Another option... Harold Sigurdsson paired with Sargon, and this time you don't have the AoE, but if you are swarmed, you do get that AoE, so you are going to apply those debuffs up to three targets that's attacking you. And the other thing is, since you have 20% probability to cast your active skill of Harold, that means you can apply more debuffs with Harold and Sargon, but Harold and Sargon is going to be extremely squishy, and they don't have, you know, they don't have the movement speed that you have with Alexander and Harold, and that's the downside. Also, if you're an infantry main, you probably already have Alexander pre-season of Conquest. So I don't know, pick your poison. But as I said, you can use Sargon with pretty much any infantry commander. If you have CJ, definitely try CJ and Sargon. But most of us don't have CJ unless for some reason you are a you're a pure infantry, not infantry main, but pure infantry. But I don't recommend it unless you are a very high spender like Duke or Rexy. I think my go-to pair would be Sargon paired with Alexander the Great because I don't want to split my Guan CPO. They are they're really good together. If I would ever invest on Sargon one day, I would probably go Sargon with Alexander and I will just sacrifice the extra damage that Herald provides. Instead, I will bring Sargon so I can be more helpful for my team and other marchers around me. So this was my flowchart when it comes to who should invest on Sargon. I've actually made this flowchart on Tuesday and I even show it on stream from my phone, but I just didn't have the time to record and edit the video. I finally managed to find some uh, free time today. So here it is. 
Sargon investment flowchart and here as I mentioned at the start of the video our one hour Sargon only podcast slash live stream with Psychout, Shappy, 12 inch, Duke and Rexy. We exclusively discuss Sargon. I see you guys on that live stream. Bye.